Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, your one-stop website for all of the day's latest church apostasy news, end time news. Now, Trad Cat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit, and I'm keeping you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima. And folks, I ask you to please subscribe to Trad Cat Night right now. And also click the notification button here on YouTube. And if I can also ask you, please click uh, click the donate button, click PayPal, and get behind this uh, apostle that I'm doing my very best to bring you uh, the best guests from around the world. And we've had a great start to this 2018 campaign, if you will. You can also find these talks now on SoundCloud. So in podcast format, just simply search Trad Cat Night. And today, my good friends, wow, we've got another blockbuster talk for you. Uh, We've had him on before in the past, and this is an area which, although it's not my area of expertise, is something that I'm keeping my eye on uh, as it relates to uh, what the New World Order is doing from a a scientific standpoint, if you will. And today's guest is none other than Anthony Patch, author, researcher, and writer. And uh, Anthony has a very prolific uh, background, but his main areas uh, of study for the past, well, it's been about two decades or so, is covering ancient history, archaeology, biology, medicine, meteorology, philosophy, quantum physics, and also religion. You can get to his website by simply typing in anthonypatch.com. I'll label everything out for you in the description box, and if he has any uh, other social media I will uh, like him to get that out to the public, but I'll also put that in the description box as well. So, Anthony, thanks for taking time out today. We're going to try to get through as much information as we can over the next <laughs> 30 minutes or so. I know it's tough. You've got to condense so much information and, and put it into layman's terms here. You know, First of all, how are you doing, and uh, what's the latest with CERN? Is there any CERN updates that you can give us? Well, very good. I'm doing great, and thank you for inviting me back on. Uh, it's always good to be with you, Eric. And we uh, chatted last week on Truth Frequency Radio with Kev Baker on his show, so we had a great time and a huge, huge response to your uh, prolific information that you research on as well. So, yeah, I appreciate you speaking with me again today. And the things with CERN right now, they're shut down for the winter. They do that every year, and that gives them a chance to do maintenance and wasn't a real blockbuster year last year other than the fact that they brought online a linear accelerator that they call the AWAKE Linear Accelerator Program. And that's actually attached to the uh, main collider, if you will, at CERN. And they did some prototype testing with that. And they're going to combine the power of a linear and circular, which is the main ring, collider at CERN later on this year and ramp up the power again. So that's about in a nutshell, where CERN is right now. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit more uh, about this new magazine, or at least I believe it to be a new magazine called Entangled Magazine. And, uh, you know, what's involved with that? Again, I, I w- we were talking off air, and I was getting through uh, the latest that you, you put out to me via email, and it's just absolutely mind-blowing and, and just fascinating stuff. Uh, I want to continue picking up reading it uh, after we're finished here. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about the, the mission of this uh, magazine and you know what you're hoping to accomplish and, and some areas of research. I know basically for this talk, folks, we want to get into the latest in, in AI and maybe kind of draw a correlation to scripture. And I'll throw a scripture out there, and I, I want to get a- Anthony's take on it. But uh, maybe tell us a little bit about this magazine. Yeah, it allows a, a platform for myself and other researchers to present really the deeper discussion of things like quantum computing, artificial intelligence, which we'll get into, cryptocurrencies and the blockchain system, Um, also DNA and RNA modification, particle physics. We really get into these things that actually are in the broader perspective or discussion of modern science, being able to look at the impacts and the paradigm changes that are happening to the everyday person. Um, Take, for example, the impact that a cell phone has had. This is the same thing in terms of science across the board of the disciplines, but also really what I'm focused on right now is this whole 
parabolic increase, as I call it, in both artificial intelligence and the spawn of AI, which is the blockchain system. And this is what I consider to be performing two tasks. Blockchain is uh, what most people have focused on is the cryptocurrency, so to speak, the Bitcoin system. But it's really the architecture behind that that I really am trying to illuminate for people, pardon the pun, and what blockchain means to every individual on the planet. And this all has its origins in artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and the origins of quantum computing reach all the way back into something one of the dark arts known as geomancy. And geomancy has spawned all of the binary systems that we encounter today, including cell phones and computers. So that's it in a nutshell. Wow. Now, could you break this down for us and put it into layman's terms? What is the Mandela effect and how does the Mandela effect, according to your research, kind of tie into you know everything mm. that you and I both both talk about? I mean, we hear this word kind of thrown out there a lot uh and i just wanted to get a, a more precise definition if you will coming from your perspective sure great question uh, back in june when i uh, published the first issue of entangled magazine we discussed the mandela effect in terms of quantum computing specifically d-wave corporation uh, there was a 2013 presentation made by one of the co-founders of d-wave gordy rose uh, who is a physicist, and he stated openly to the public that they were accessing at that time two to the 500th power of parallel dimensions. Now, this is an interdimensional communication tool in which he also openly said not only are they communicating interdimensionally, but in his own words, he said, if we are clever enough, if we are smart enough, we will reach into these other dimensions and extract resources and bring those resources into our world. Now that's verbatim. And I provided a transcript in Entangled Magazine just so that you could see his own words. This is not hyperbole on my part. So to define the Mandela effect, I have coined the phrase quantum pollution because they are bringing information from the other side, from the fallen angels, forbidden knowledge, into our realm and revising our reality. Thus, the quantum pollution, otherwise known by Gordy Rose's statement, as resources brought into this. This is the same thing as uh, John Dee and Edward Kelly in the late 1500s. This is Crowley. This is all the same practice of communicating with the other side. Now, we have on record a lot of these Freemasons suggesting that reason and science will win out in the end over faith. We know that the New Age uh, in and of itself wants to do away with dogmatism uh, as we know it. H how does this kind of elevation of science, if you will, and, and maybe we could talk a little bit about the whole transhumanism uh, agenda. How does this fit into the, this new Tower of Babel construct, if you will? You know, where, where are they going with this? Mm -hmm. Well, it reaches back to the Garden of Eden in terms of the promise by Lucifer that ye shall be as gods if you partake of the tree of knowledge and, and are then aware of good and evil. And this ascension to godlike status is being promulgated by the priesthood of science. The leaders in the scientific world, the researchers as well as those that are funding the research, consider themselves to be the modern-day priesthood of modern science, and they keep the science itself in this arcane language of mathematics to the extent that the average person has a difficult time understanding their terminology as well as the math. And that's my um, real forte, is being able to translate for the average person the arcane language in this priesthood of scientific research and discoveries and show you the archaic origins, the ancient origins of this arcane language and take away the mysticism that is promulgated by the priesthood. Absolutely. Now I'm going to throw a scripture out there for you, uh, Anthony. I want to get your take on this. I was kind of meditating upon it this, this morning uh, in the Apocalypse, Revelation uh, uh, 13, 15, and it was given to him to give life to the image 
of the beast, and, and this we're speaking about the false prophet here specifically, uh, and to the image of the beast should speak. Are we on are we on the road to a merger between this AI technology, if you will, and an actual image to which could bring forth uh, the, the fruition of the scripture, uh, essentially? We kind of got into this a little bit on Truth Frequency Radio, but I wanted to get your take on it. I mean, it seems like this technology is right in front of us, like we're not decades away. I mean, this could be in a matter of years, possibly. Absolutely. It's right here and right now. And the big push in artificial intelligence is to actually accelerate the development of AI. And they actually call these programs acceleration programs. So they are pushing very quickly towards this mark of the beast system, which is what blockchain is. The cryptocurrency system is to build out the mark of the beast system in which you will then be denied access to buy and sell unless you take the mark of the beast. So the cryptocurrency is the carrot and the stick. It is getting people to build their own prison system of the blockchain because every aspect of life is meant to be tied into and controlled through the blockchain system. With AI specifically, what it is doing is it is um, mimicking the human race, both mentally and physically, and they are from the DNA aspect, which is another area that I research extensively, they are literally with bioprinters building out the human form as well as building out the artificial brain, the two of which will then form this transhumanism system in which they will encourage people to upload themselves into this hive mentality system known as the sentient world simulation. So their increasing one in, in programming is known as the granularity of data. The more that they feed the blockchain system data, all of our personal data, it raises the IQ, so to speak, of the AI system. It increases the amount of data in the blockchain system. And the two together realize literally the image of the beast and the beast system born out of quantum computing, which is nothing more than a communication system through the ancient craft of geomancy. Technology from the ancient Greek is the science of the craft. I rest my case. This is the evidence of evil. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got to tie the whole, you know, police state that's that's being shoved down our throats and, you know, all the spying on us and all the technology. I mean, they're listening to us right now. It seems like you know, every smartphone coming out can basically, you know, grab information from us. I mean, even Facebook. I mean, let's be honest with you. I mean, it's basically just an, an information grab, if you will. Uh, so it seems, uh, you know, another rabbit hole. I, I think we kind of touched upon this a little bit is the whole concept of, of brain hacking. And I kind of wanted you to maybe talk about uh, mind control a little bit, brain hacking. Uh, recently, uh, I was talking with another guest and we were talking about these nanoparticles uh, falling from the sky via the chemtrails. Maybe you can. Maybe I can get your take on that as to how that fits into the whole scheme of things. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a very fascinating uh, uh, area, if you will. And I just wanted you to talk uh, as much as you would like in, the, in this area, um, Anthony. Yeah, again, I cover this in several articles in Entangled Magazine, what I've described for over five years now as dormant nanoparticles that we have through the aerosolized spraying programs GMO programs we have ingested, we have consumed, we have been exposed to, we've inhaled the nanoparticles that will be activated. They're presently dormant. They will be activated in this mark of the beast system that once you accept the mark of the beast through 5G technology, a millimeter wave signal will be broadcast, which it is right now. But once you, through free will, accept the mark of the beast, again, to access the blockchain system, you will be instantly transformed. These nanoparticles actually form artificial DNA in the form of a third strand of DNA. All of this comes from research. These are all peer-reviewed papers. This is not hyperbole on my part. I'm simply reporting the information from the sources of the research, the laboratories and the universities. What we are seeing here is the manipulation of the minds, not only through um, mind-to-skull technology in which they're broadcasting signals that are, appear as thoughts in our minds. But also, once the dormant nanoparticles propagate the third strand of DNA, you lose all sense of awareness. 
number one, you've been changed, and number two, that you are now plugged into the hive mind known out of Purdue University as a sentient world simulation. You are being plugged into the blockchain system mentally, and therefore you become part of the collaborative. So that's the sum total of it. Wow. And uh, when I was on Truth Frequency Radio, we, we talked about several um, cities being pretty important to the New World Order, Rome, Jerusalem being uh, several of them. I would also throw London in there. Uh, is, in terms of an end game, uh, as far as I have seen and researched, it seems to be that, that ev eventually there'll just be a supercomputer that everyone will be hooked up to. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh you know, I wanted to get your mm -hmm. take on that. Isn't there a, 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 um, a supercomputer called the Beast out there, someone in Europe? Um, you know, what, what, what's your mm -hmm. research uh, led you to include in this area in terms of being hooked up to one, you know, database, essentially? Well, going back to 1970, um, Zbigniew Brzezinski published a book in which he specifically cited a computer system back then based on transistors known as a supercomputer by the name of the beast that was located in Europe. Now, what they have built out through D-Wave and what IBM is trying to catch up to is a quantum computing system based on qubits, not transistors. And this is the system that forms the beast computer system itself that runs the sentient world simulation in which every person presently is represented by a node, a computer network node, but given an avatar. And if the audience will look up, <clears throat> do a search for a company by the name of PAI, that is a personal artificial intelligence. This is a company openly building personal avatars for everyone and encouraging everyone to add as much of their own personal information as well as the information that is gathered through the intelligence agency and corporations on everything that we do to model our behavior, to increase the IQ of AI with this input of data. And the avatar, according to Purdue University in 2006, their own paper, they said that this avatar that everyone is given in the simulation is then the avatar that not only remotely gathers information, but will then turn to people to encourage them, as PAI is doing, to build out their avatars, that, um, as they say, for benevolent purposes, that this is going to help you, mm. when in fact what it is doing is building out your avatar, that you will then be literally uploaded to, and you will exist in the sentient world simulation thus leaving your physical form behind. Unbelievable. Cert just absolutely fascinating uh, subject. And again, uh, Anthony Patch from anthonypatch.com just brings forth so much knowledge that quite honestly, and, until I hadn't heard of your, you know, the, these particular areas and started following Anthony's work, it, it really raises your eyebrows um, as it relates to the times that we live in. And, and Anthony, I... I you and I, I think we're both on the same page in, in terms of the times we live in. Now, one of the things that we hear the New Age talking about is this, you know, self-realization. We hear of the Christ consciousness. And in one of your articles in Entangled Magazine, you cover uh, very uh, extensively the, this notion of consciousness. You know, how important is it to the New World Order and the New Age? And well, maybe break down that article for us from Entangled Magazine. Mm -hmm. Well, consciousness can, <clears throat> excuse me, can be formed from our own memories and experiences, and those can be recorded digitally. And this, again, through all of the uh, scientific papers, this does prove out to be the case, that our memories can be recorded. They can be converted to zeros and ones, and therefore uploaded into a binary system. Now, the definition of consciousness can be a philosophical as well as a theological one, but in terms of technology, if they consider consciousness to simply be the sum total of our knowledge and experiences, that absolutely can be uploaded into a computer. And this is what they are seeking to do and already have begun the process of doing that through these avatars. So consciousness is something that can be stolen. However, is it the God-given consciousness? No. Is it our soul? Absolutely not. 
All we are talking about here is data. Now data is stored. Our database is our DNA. Our brains are quantum computers. And again, this comes literally from the biological aspects of the construct and functioning of our neurons. And I cover that in the magazine as well. So what we're talking about here is a quantum computer between our ears tied to our DNA database. This is what they're replicating, both our computer processor, our brain, as well as reproducing the data stored in our DNA, all of which has already been proven to be capable of being digitized into zeros and ones. Absolutely. Now, one of the things uh, that I did mention on Truth Frequency Radio was as Catholics, the early church fathers said, if you want to know the times you really live in, uh, look for this rebuilt uh, third temple that the Antichrist will essentially be uh, sitting in uh, ultimately. And just shortly before the show, Anthony sent me over some interesting pictures. And I wanted to get your, uh, you know, your take and your comments on this uh, concerning the counterfeit Herod's temple and how it relates to this end game that uh, upon which we speak of uh anthony because this is this is something new to me and i i kind of want to dig into it uh a little bit more going down the road sure absolutely it's interesting <clears throat> the architecture the blueprint for herod's temple matches exactly the construct of d-wave and ibm's quantum computing chip which as i said contains qubits instead of transistors. Qubits are quantum bits. The layout of these bits form the holy of holies within not only the computer chip, but also when you merge the two together, when you overlay their images, the holy of holies is located in Herod's temple at exactly the same location as the qubits on the larger chipset, including the wiring diagram the wires that connect to the qubits actually extend out and form the same pattern that you see in Herod's temple. And that's on the cover of one of my entangled magazines. The other interesting fact is that the arrangement, what I call the spinal column of D-Wave and IBM's computer architecture, they have what appears to be an inverted pyramid by design that forms what appears to be an inverted spinal column with the qubit chipset at the very bottom tip, that is actually an exact model of what is known in Egypt as Osiris's spinal column, which is known as the DJED. That is D as in David, J-E-D. And that will be coming out in the February issue of Entangle magazine. Now, we always see these uh, New World Order types always kind of pushing the boundaries here. They're talking about how they want to, uh, you know, live forever, uh, live forever. The, you know, the whole question of immortality. How does the, you know, this tie in with the whole transhumanist agenda? And I, I wanted to get your comments also on the potentiality of a, a rising up, uh, if you will, of super soldiers, if you will. There's been a lot mm -hmm. of articles that come out the past six months, even uh, not just from the alternative media uh, area, but mainstream media has also been reporting upon this. Maybe you could touch upon uh, those two questions, Anthony. Absolutely. Again, uh, reaching back into DNA and RNA, we, we discuss uh, one individual I can cite for you, Dr. Craig Venter, and his Institute for Human Longevity in La Jolla, California. He was the first person to um, map his own human genome. And this was done through the work with the particle accelerator at UC Berkeley, where I attended school. Uh, the mapping of the human genome has thus today resulted in the digitizing of DNA and the transmission through the cloud of that digitized DNA model, that pattern, what is known as in silico DNA, and then the reassembling of that DNA model using bioprinters to reconstruct, not clone, but reconstruct from a digital software program an exact copy of the DNA from the original. Now, all of this has already been done. This is five and six year old technology that's been openly in the public made known through even mainstream science magazines like Nature Magazine, not just hidden information. So the point here is that with the digitizing of DNA, they are able to create super soldiers. They are able to manifest 
enhancements, augmentations in the human body and the human mind, because the DNA, not only by its modeling and its genome mapping, can be digitized, but also the information contained within the DNA. Again, the zeros and ones within the DNA, because it is a database. They are able to upload, they're able to manipulate that DNA to their own design. And this is where we are going in terms of um, hybrids, if you're talking about the image of the beast, as we mentioned, but also human beings themselves being modified. And they do this, again, saying we're going to cure cancer, Alzheimer's, all of these benevolent scenarios they put out. But understand that that's not for you and me. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another interesting article, again, I'm trying to get caught up on a lot of what Anthony's putting out there, uh, relates to this Boltzmann uh, machine, also AlphaGo. Uh, and then uh, I guess just the, the latest coming from Google. Maybe you can get us caught up to date with what they're cooking up uh, as of late. Yeah, well, let's go to Google specifically and work backwards very quickly. This is AutoML. This is automatic machine learning. This is the machines programming themselves. This is the machines teaching themselves. And they have what is called a control or controller neural net. And that will spawn a child model <clears throat> that the child model architecture is derived from the parent, which is the controller neural net and it will feed information to the child net. The child net will then either make mistakes or act appropriately, correctly. It's um, true or false scenarios, if you will, that's then fed back to the controller. The controller learns how better to teach the child and the, te the child reveals to the teacher the mistakes it's making and therefore they teach each other. And this recursive process, this feedback process is reiterated. It's um, repeated thousands of times per second, building a new architecture. This is a complete departure from anything in computer science, computer software programming in which the machine is programming itself. The final result is that the child exceeds the parent the child program exceeds the controller program, and therefore they move on from there. This is all based on modeling human behavior. It's all through image and facial recognition as a f foundation. It travels through computer gaming. It is a recurrent neural network, and then a deep neural network to a cognitive neural network, deep machine learning scenario in which the machines are teaching themselves. Mm, absolutely amazing. Now, again, folks, if you get to anthonypatch.com, you're going to find up in the top of the browser there uh, direct links to his Entangled magazine. He has an online uh, webinar series, but he also has uh, some books, and I wanted you to maybe give us a synopsis, Anthony, break them down, Covert, Catastrophe, and 2048, Diamond in the Rough, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, they're just two novels that are... Advent, an adventure story. It's part of a trilogy I hope to complete. And what it is doing is highlighting all of the technologies that I've been talking about with you and presenting it in a novel form, but it is showing you things. In fact, the first book, Covert Catastrophe, was written in 2013, 2014, uh, 2048 Diamonds in the Rough, which focuses on quantum computing. All of the technology in there, except a couple of pieces, have actually all come to pass. They've all come to fruition since publishing the book. So it was at the time a look into the near future. And I think it's still a good background for people who are still desiring to learn more about the high tech that is changing the paradigms of our personal lives. Now, folks, uh, again, Apocalypse 1315, and it was given... Uh, him power to give life to the image of the beast. And if you've been following Trad Cat Knight, you know that I am completely convinced that this false prophet character is going to arrive onto the scene with Antichrist Maitreya here shortly after the economic collapse. And we're seeing all of this technology right in front of our eyes. And Anthony is the go-to guy bar none. You have to get to his website, order his books. And lastly, Anthony, uh, you know, how can they support your research through Patreon? which will be, I think, is launching, what, in the next few days? Yes, thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, 
because of the censorship that is we're all experiencing in the alternative medias on YouTube and Facebook and social media in general, um, I'm turning to Patreon to ask for support in continuing my research and the people that are working with me. So that will be up and running in the next couple of days. We're still finishing up some of the video introduction on that. But I wanted to very quickly leave everyone with a piece of positive information. And that's John 14, 12 to 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. What is happening with the fullness of the Gentiles that we're experiencing right now, those that are found in the book of life that have the Holy Spirit in dwelling within the temple body, our body is the temple, and therefore we are going in the present time because the book of Daniel has been opened. That's where we're at, folks. We are experiencing a transformation and augmentation of ourselves to where Christ, just before he was crucified, said that you will do greater works than I. So I give you that as the encouragement that God is in control. This is all part of his plan. Satan is rushing to sidestep judgment with that, all of these advancements in technology. But we know that these are parts of what God has brought on for those that not have not turned to him, have not repented and have not accepted Christ as their Savior, and who have not turned their face to worship God, but are worshiping Lucifer. We, found in the book of life, will do greater works by Christ's own words than Christ himself before he was crucified. Yeah, and we fly by the motto here at Tradcat Night, faith over fear. So don't give in to despair, worry, and doubt. I know when you tune into you know, the, the mainstream media or even get onto social media, it just seems like one catastrophe after another and just one negative thing after another. And that's, you know, as I always say, we got to keep our eyes on the rainbow, which is just beyond the storm. And we can't get to that rainbow unless we go through the storm first. So, but we have to expose. I mean, this is what Anthony and I try to do. We come at it from slightly different angles. And again, Anthony is, is the scientific guy to go to, bar none, folks. So get to his website. It'll be in the description box. And as always, folks, I thank you for tuning in to Trad Cat Night Radio. Make sure you get to tradcatnight.blogspot.com daily. Again, click that PayPal button. I remind everyone uh, I don't charge anyone for these exclusive talks, but simply if you can maintain this apostolate by getting behind me financially, I surely would appreciate it. And who will be on tomorrow's show? Who will be the special guest? Well, tune in and find out, my good friends. And until next time, stay safe and God bless.